Good morning and welcome to the Diocese of Caledonia's online worship for this Sunday, January 22nd, the third Sunday after Epiphany. I'm David Lehman, Bishop of Caledonia, and the Diocese ministers on and with 10 First Nations, the Haida, Shimshan, Niska, Haisla, Gitsan, Wasetwatan, Dilkane, Sakani, Cree Indonesia, along with the Meti, a privilege we gratefully acknowledge. So please come in, reflect on the readings with us, sing the hymns, and pray the prayers. May we pray. God of all people, you sent your Son into our shadowed world. May his dawning light give hope to the broken, the persecuted, the alien, and the excluded, so that we might feel the kingdom drawing near and turn to follow him through Jesus Christ, the morning star. Amen. We sing our first hymn, Will You Come and Follow Me? Jesus has been tempted by the devil in the wilderness. His responses show his complete dedication to the will and purpose of God. He has refused to use his divine power to his own human ends. Now he moves to Capernaum to launch his public ministry. The Lord be with you and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region in shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. 
And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called to them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Gospel reading today is a setup. We're being prepared to move into Jesus' teachings and to, especially in the next few weeks, focus in on the Sermon on the Mount. There is much to mine there, and we will be getting to it over the next few weeks. But for today, we see Jesus doing an important movement. He leaves Nazareth and goes to Capernaum, to the, the um, Galilee of the Gentiles, Sort of this disparaging comment made about not quite being as holy or as religious or as central. You can imagine that being said about a number of communities that sit in opposition to each other. I can think of growing up in Fort Smith and what we said about Hay River and Yellowknife. Or you think of the ongoing battle between Toronto and Hamilton or Toronto and Montreal. Um, or, you know, if you really want to push it, the Battle of Alberta. And yet, we know that Capernaum is in a hub. It is an important crossroads community, and Jesus is going there with intentionality, partly because no prophet is recognized or regarded in his own town. And having gone to my hometown, I, there, there's some truth to that, and um, that is part of the dynamic, but there's also this important part about being in that hub space, being in a place where Jesus can reach into the Jewish and the Gentile communities to be the savior of all. And so he goes there and he's setting up his school as a rabbi of his age would be doing because up to the age 30, a Jewish male in that time would be training, learning, studying. For the first few years, what we call elementary school, it'd be learning the Torah. And then for the next few years, it'd be learning the prophets. And then the, the uh, poetry uh, of the scriptures and committing all that to memory. And then at age 16 to 18, a rabbi would come along and interview you and decide if you were someone worthy to pick up his mantle. And then for the next 12 years or so, you would study under that rabbi. And at age 30, you would strike out on your own to gather up your own apostles, your own followers, your own students. And that's what Jesus is doing here. He's setting up his school so that he can now teach his message. And he's not grabbing the usual crowd. He's not going down to the high school and looking around to see who's there. No, no. Now that... That's next week's talk. But we know we see that he's gone after some tradesmen today. And that's, you know, fisher people. And that they are, they've already been excluded from the process. They've already been sent back to work in the family business and not be there. But here's Jesus going and picking up some unlikely people to offer them a profound experience in teaching and in ministry and in life and being part of God's great plan. I honestly see parishes, churches, as places of learning. Now, recently I heard a sermon that told me that the last thing you should see in a sermon is that it's a profound piece of learning and teaching, because most people walk away and forget about it, unless it's really, really good, or most likely really, really bad. And when I reflected on that, I thought, very true. 
but the fact I'm remembering that comment means it was really, really good, and thank you, Ben. But we have this moment where we need to be more than that. We need to be more than just a Sunday booster shot to get us through the week. We need to be these places where people come and learn to live out the gospel in real and tangible ways. That we need to model our life as a congregation, as a parish, about being a school where we learn about the mysteries of God, where we learn about forgiveness in practical, tangible ways. We be people of profound reconciliation, which is not easy and is difficult, but that is what we're called to do. And so I pray this day that we can be places and institutions where there is much learning and much growth, and that we can be places where we grow ourselves so that we may grow others. Amen. Thank you for your continued tithe support of your parish and the diocese. It is most appreciated. Our offertory hymn is From Heaven You Came.
prayers of the people, sisters and brothers, let us lift our hearts in faith to the one who hears all prayers and holds close all those in need. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Catholic Church throughout the world, Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury, Linda Nichols, our primate, Chris Harper, the National Indigenous Anglican Bishop, Lynn McNaughton, our Metropolitan, and David Lehman, our Bishop, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For presbyters, deacons, and all who minister in Christ, and for all the holy people of God, in the Anglican Communion cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of North India. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the honorary canons of the diocese. Lord, have mercy. For this holy gathering, for all who worshiped in person today, and for all who enter with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this country, for all nations and their leaders, and for our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in danger and need, the sick and the suffering, prisoners, captives, and their families, the hungry, homeless, and oppressed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have asked for our prayers, do I have to say? Please name those who are on your hearts and minds this morning. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the dying and the dead and for those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves, our families, friends, and companions on the way, and all those we love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Holy God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring healing to all wounds. Make whole all that is broken. Speak truth to all illusion and shed light in every darkness that all creation will see your glory and know your Christ. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, and in the language dearest to our hearts, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our worship today, and thank you for continuing to join us as we gather Monday through Saturday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Mountain, for prayers at midday on the Cathedral Facebook page. Nightly, you'll find me at 9 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Mountain, for service of Compline on the Diocesan Facebook page. I pray that God will continue to strengthen and guide you in what he is calling you to do. In the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and indeed forevermore. Amen. Our concluding hymn is, Jesus Shall Reign.
Let us go forth called and sent. Thanks be to God.